Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Randy Calistrier. I play cello. This is Millie Calistrier. She plays the violin. And together we are the Synergismus Duo. And we are here for the final concert of the season for the Florham Park Public Library Second Sunday series. Thank you very much, Nancy Shaw, for, for making this concert happen today. Millie and I have been playing concerts here in Florham Park for 14 years now. We've played at the library several times. And today we have a special treat for you. Not only are we playing this concert, but if you happen to be watching it live on April 11th, we are also chatting with you live on YouTube. So make sure your chat window is open. You get to watch us play and you get to ask us questions. We're going to be commenting throughout the performance. Should be a lot of fun. That first piece that we played was Be Our Guest from Beauty and the Beast. It's our traditional opener that we play for every concert. But today our music is all about dance. We have dance music from hundreds of years, from three different continents, and uh, so we're going to be traveling thousands of miles in the next hour while we play different songs for you. And we're going to start with a very old style of French courtly dance music. If you think about the ladies in the flowing gowns and the men in their powdered wigs promenading around the castle, this is the sort of music that they would be doing, that they would be, that they would be dancing to. And there are several French dances back from the 1500s. You have courants and sarabans. This one happens to be a gavotte. But it's a more modern gavotte. This is, was written by the Russian composer Reinhold Gruyere in 1909. He wrote a set of eight duets for violin and cello. And he purposely chose one of these ancient styles of dance because he liked it a lot and because he thought it still had something to say to modern culture. So this is a gavotte by Reinhold Gruyere. in the middle of that. That was not a mistake. 
The French gavotte very often has a center section called a musette, and it's supposed to sound like the drowning, the, the droning of French bagpipes. They drowned them in the next century. They drilled them in the 15th century. So we had a French dance by a Russian composer. If you split the difference, you end up in Hungary. And that's where our next piece takes us. The great German composer Johannes Brahms was first known as a great concert pianist. And in 1869, he was on a concert tour of Hungary. And when he wasn't playing, he was wandering the streets, listening for new sounds and new melodies that he might turn into uh, a new composition. And he discovered that he loved the sound of Hungarian music, particularly this dance called the Chardis. They didn't have anything like it in Germany at the time. It's the sort of thing that you would hear a fiddler playing around a campfire in the middle of the woods. It's very gypsy music. And when he got back home, he sat down and he wrote 21 Hungarian dances for piano. Of those 21 Hungarian dances, only three are original works by Brahms. The other 18, let's just say that he borrowed them from other composers in Hungary, some of them still alive at the time and not very happy that Brahms had taken their work. The one we're playing today, the Brahms Hungarian Dance Number no. 5, should really be called the Bela Kaler Chartist Number no. 1 because it is a Chartist and because Bela Kaler is the guy that wrote the tune. Thank you. 
most graceful, most romantic dance is the Viennese Waltz. It actually dates back from the 1500s as well, the same time period as the Gavotte. And at the time, it was considered a scandalous dance because the men and women would stand so close together, their hands were actually touching. And that was just not allowed. You had the men on one side of the room, you had the women on the other side of the room, and they would do line dancing. This waltz, this, this, this newfangled dance, no, that was not good. And then the upper class aristocracy got a hold of it and turned it into a ballroom dance, and all of Vienna fell in love with it. The waltz king was Johann Strauss Jr. He wrote over 500 waltzes and polkas in other dance music during his lifetime, and he is the main reason why the waltz became so popular in Vienna during the 1800s. His most popular waltz is the Blue Danube Waltz on der Schirmen Blauen Donau. This was written for full orchestra. We are going to do an arrangement for just two of us that I, that I uh, arranged a few years back. This is the Blue Danube Waltz by Strauss.
Next up is a set of two Italian folk songs. One is a mazurka called Trabelia il Zono, Between Waking and Sleeping. The other is a polka called Baldoria, or the Bacchanal. You don't normally think of mazurkas and polkas as Italian music, but in fact, they, they really are. The mazurka was originally Polish, and the polka was originally Czech or Bohemian, but music has a way of traveling around, and these popular dances spread across Europe. They eventually reached Italy, and a number of Italian composers started writing them, and then with the immigration to the United States, many people brought their music with them, and so you have these songs arriving in the United States in the early 1920s, and one of the people that, that helped uh, make these popular was my great-grandfather Eugenio Calistri. He was an accordion player and he had a band in Binghamton, New York, and these are two of the songs that he used to play, and the band would play for the, for the um, Italian feast days, they would play just to have fun in the backyard uh, with their friends and family, everybody having a good time um, playing their songs from the old world. So this is Carabellia il Zono and Baldoria, two Italian folk songs.
If you wander into pretty much any pub in Scotland or Ireland or many places in England, you are very likely to stumble across a group of local musicians and singers and dancers having a great time. And in Scotland in particular, the songs that you would hear would be jigs and reels. They're pretty similar, jigs are a little bit faster than a reel. These are songs that have been handed down from generation to generation. Everybody knows the songs, everybody knows the dances. It's what helps keep the communities together and what helps keep traditions alive. And they're really fun to play. The problem is that they're very short. Most jigs are less than a minute long. And so what they'll do is they'll string a bunch of them together and it's called a jig set. And if you're in Scotland, the tradition is to try to include the Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond as one of the songs in your set. And if you happen to be playing at closing time, the very last song you're supposed to play is the Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond, very slow, very sad, while everybody finishes their pints and heads for the door. This is the Haymaker's Jig set.
reel. This is an American reel, very different from what you just heard, but it has similar roots. This is an old fiddle tune. Nobody knows who, who wrote it. Um, it's been around for at least 150 years, probably longer than that. It was originally called Chief Sipping Bull, and then about 20 years ago, the fiddler Mark O'Connor arranged it uh, and renamed it Chief Sitting in the Rain. And he wrote it for himself playing fiddle, Mark O'Connor. He wrote it for Yo-Yo Ma playing cello, and he wrote it for Edgar Meyer playing bass, the three titans of their instruments for folk music. And this was the very first piece that that trio ever performed in public. This is Chief Sitting in the Rain, arranged by Mark O'Connor. Since we don't have a bass player today, I get to play both the cello and the bass part. associated with ragtime. Uh, the two-step is probably the most common. There was also cakewalk. There were other variations on that. And the king of ragtime music was Scott Joplin. He wrote 44 piano rags during his life. He also wrote a ballet and two operas that almost nobody knows about, but he was famous for his ragtime music. 
and we're going to be playing one of his piano rags on violin and cello. This is called Country Club. music is at Broadway shows, uh, and we'll get to those in just a minute, but before we get to Broadway, <laughs> uh, if you take the blues and you take ragtime and you put them together, you get jazz, and the dance version of jazz is swing, and uh, jitterbugs and Charleston and all sorts of fun dances. And those were the dance crazes that took us through the 20s and 30s and 40s into the 50s. We're going to be playing two big band tunes, swing numbers. The first is Glenn Miller's Chattanooga Choo Choo, which was the very first gold record. It was the first recording.
purporting to sell more than a million copies in the United States. And we're going to follow that up with Duke Ellington's Don't Get Around Much Anymore. saying before I so rudely interrupted myself, a great place to find dance music is at Broadway shows. 
And we're going to look at one particular show. This is West Side Story, the great musical by Leonard Bernstein in 1957. It's basically a retelling of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, except instead of the Montagues and the Capulets, you've got the Jets and the Sharks battling out for turf on the west side of New York City. And there's a lot of really nice Latin music in West Side Story. And we're going to play two songs for you. The first is Maria. This is in the style of a habanero, which is a Cuban dance from the 1800s. And the second one we're going to play is America. This is a Mexican huapango. Uh, it has very interesting rhythms. You're alternating between two beats and three beats. It keeps going back and forth. So two Latin dances from West Side Story.
So if you do your Mexican Hopango and you keep on heading south from there, just before you get wet in the Pacific Ocean, you end up in Argentina, the birthplace of the tango. The tango originated in the, the waterfront bars of Argentina in 1880, and it's really the only time and the only place that it could have been invented. This was one of these perfect melting pot moments. You had the local South Americans, you had the European sailors and immigrants, you had the African slaves, all with their own music, all coming together in the same place at the same time. And what arose out of this was the tango, the most passionate of dances. If those people back in the 1500s thought that it was a shock to see the waltz, what, uh, what would they possibly have thought if they saw a tango? We're going to be doing two tangos for you today. The first is the most popular tango in all of Argentina. It is El Choclo. And the second one is Por Una Cabeza. Uh, this one has been featured in several movies and TV shows, uh, most famously in Scent of a Woman with Al Pacino, and most infamously in True Lies, where you get to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger attempt to dance the tango with Jamie Lee Curtis. Two tangos from Argentina. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for joining us today. We've had a wonderful time playing for you. We hope that we can play for you in person very soon. Until then, we are going to end this concert as we end all of our concerts with America the Beautiful.